Hello, preschool friends. I hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you're staying warm in this chilly spring weather. Not really spring. Today is one of one of my favorite books, and a book that we've read before is A Visitor for Bear. And if you remember, the bear is a grumpy, grumpy old bear who doesn't want any friends, but the mouse is determined to make a new friend. Oh, and look at the back. It's a picture of him carrying the mouse out by his tail. We would never pick up our mice like that, would we? A Visitor for Bear by Bonnie Becker, illustrated by Caddy McDonald Denton. She's got a long name. There's a little tea set. Here's Bear's house. And I can already see the sign on his door that says, No Visitors Allowed. It's written very tiny. No one ever came to Bear's house. It had always been that way, and Bear was quite sure he didn't like visitors. He even had a sign. So there's that sign again. No visitors allowed. He wrote no really big. One morning, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. Hmm. I'll turn this. When he opened his door, there was a mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. No visitors allowed, Bear said, pointing to the sign. Go away. He closed the door and went back to the business of making his breakfast. Oh, he's got a very grumpy look on his face, too. He set out one cup and one spoon. But when he opened the cupboard to get one bowl, what do you think he saw? There was the mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. Right here. Bear is surprised. I told you to leave, cried Bear. Perhaps we could have just a spot of tea, said the mouse. Out, commanded Bear. Most sorry, said the mouse. I'll be going now. Bear showed him to the door and shut it firmly. This is that picture that was on the very back. The mouse looks surprised in that picture. Then he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the bread drawer for one slice of bread, uh-oh, what do you think he's going to find? Man, I don't think I've seen him smile yet. Such a grumpy bear. There was the mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. Ooh, look, the bear got down to look at him. <laughs> it's like the mouse is saying, here I am, ready for breakfast. Unbelievable, rumbled Bear. Away with you, the moose. I do like a bit of cheese, said the mouse. Bear pointed a rigid claw toward the door. Yes, then, here I go, said the mouse. Farewell. And the mouse whisked out the door. Look at Bear's shouting face. The mouse decided he'll take himself out this time. He doesn't need the bear to pick him up. This time, Bear shut the door very firmly and locked it tight. He locked the windows, too, for good measure. Maybe that's how the mouse was getting in. Then once again, he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the fridge to get one egg... Oh, no. Well, he looks proud of himself in this picture. He's smiling. He's probably thinking, Phew, I finally got rid of that mouse for good. There was the mouse. Small and gray and bright-eyed, of course. Be gone, roared the bear. Do you see the mouse in the egg carton? My goodness. A crackling fire? ventured the mouse. This is impossible, intolerable, in 
insufferable, cried the bear, shaking with anger and disbelief. Terribly sorry, murmured the mouse. Now you see me. Now you don't. I am gone. And the mouse looked very sorry indeed while he waited for bear to unbolt the door and let him out again. Here's bear shaking. He's so mad. And here's mouse. So sad he didn't make a new friend today. This time, before he went back to the business of making his breakfast, Bear shut the door very, very, very firmly, locked it, boarded the windows shut, stopped up the chimney, and even plugged the drain in the bathtub. There's no way that mouse is getting back in. Carefully, Bear set about the business of making his breakfast. He opened the cupboard. No mouse. <sighs> He opened the bread drawer. Nothing. Phew. What a relief. He opened the fridge. Mouse free. Yes, indeed. He lifted the lid to the tea kettle. Oh, no. There was the mouse. Small and gray and, well, you know the rest. Bear fell to the floor and wept. I give up, he blubbered. You win. I am undone. There's the mouse in the tea kettle. Good thing it wasn't turned on. And here's Bear crying. He really wanted to be alone today, I guess. So sorry, said the mouse, but perhaps if I could have just a bit of cheese and a cup of tea, and do you think we could unstopper the chimney and have a nice fire? Bear blew his news with a loud honk. But then you must go, he sniffled. No visitors allowed. You have my word, said the mouse. So here's the mouse making a plan with the bear. Here's the bear crying and agreeing to the plan. Using his apron as a tissue. Gross. Bear unshuttered and unboarded the windows, unlocked the door, unstoppered the chimney, and unplugged the drain. He's even making a nice fire for them. He brought out two plates of cheese and two teacups, and he made a crackling fire in the fireplace for two sets of toes. The mouse warmed his feet and nibbled and sipped, and Bear did, too. They sat for a long while. The clock in Bear's house ticked loudly. This clock is on top of the chimney. Do you see it? Here's the mouse. There's the bear. Bear cleared his throat. The mouse looked most attentive. No one had ever been most attentive to bear. The fire is nice, bear announced. Lovely, said the mouse. No one had ever said bear's fires were lovely. I can do a headstand, said bear. Very impressive, exclaimed the mouse. Ooh, the, the mouse is saying very kind things to Bear. How do you think that makes Bear feel? Bear told a joke. The mouse laughed heartily. No one had ever laughed at Bear's jokes before. Bear began to think of another joke. The mouse set down his teacup. Bear quickly lifted the teapot. There's plenty more, he said. Ooh, it seems like they're becoming friends. So sorry, said the mouse, most kind, but I must be on my way. Really, you didn't need not nut go, said Bear. I am off, said the mouse, springing up from his chair. Wait, cried Bear, but the mouse stepped out the door. Toodaloo, said the mouse. Bear doesn't want the mouse to go now. At first, he didn't want the mouse in his house. Now he doesn't want the mouse to go. Don't go, wailed Bear, throwing his body across the path. But I gave you my word, said the mouse, pointing at the no visitor sign. Because the mouse promised that he would leave after having some tea and cheese. Look how big the words don't go are. Don't go. And also look at how big the word no is. No, no visitors allowed. Oh, 
that? cried Bear, pulling down the sign and tearing it up. That's for salesmen, not for friends. Look how happy Mouse is. Maybe he did make a new friend after all. Not for friends, asked the mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. Bear nodded. The mouse's bright eyes glowed brighter. Bear smiled. So cute. Do you like one lump or two? asked Bear most politely. I like two, said the mouse, and Bear agreed. So they did make a new friend. They both made a new friend. I'm glad that Bear isn't so grumpy anymore. Maybe he was grumpy because he didn't have any friends. Okay, friends, I will read you another story tomorrow. Stay warm. It's cold outside. Love and miss you guys.